If you've been watching this channel for a while, then you might remember David who ran it when it was still BTEC. Well, I was having a chat with him the other day about the Xperia 5 Mark V, and we were wondering what phones we could compare it to. And the obvious choice is a Google Pixel 8. But then I thought, actually, the Xiaomi 13T kind of gets everything right that the Xperia 5 Mark V doesn't, and vice versa. I'm going to talk about these two phones in a lot more detail in a second. Before I do, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do it. How you're going to stay on top of everything that we do. You probably already know quite a lot about the Xperia 5 Mark V. It has a very good primary camera, drops the ball a little bit with that display. And the whole kind of design looks a little bit more like an Xperia 10 series than a 5 Mark IV, which was super sleek. Generally, it's a fine phone, but it's not brilliant value because it's an expensive one. As for the Xiaomi 13T Pro, which I've got here, it's excellent value. It undercuts the Xperia 5 Mark V, gives you loads more storage, a little bit more power, and a really stunning display. The fact it's a little bit cheaper means it's actually a bit easier to recommend to most people than the Xperia 5 Mark V. But this video is also going to talk about the ways the 5 Mark V wins out. Comparing the designs of these two phones, the Xperia 5 Mark V is a taller phone. 21 by 9 aspect ratio screen means you've got a longer body. As for the Xiaomi, it's got a 20 by 9 screen, but it's also just a bigger phone, a bigger screen, and it feels more like it has presence in the hand. Slightly rounded around the back though, so it also feels a bit more like a traditional phone versus Sony's extreme blockiness with those flat sides, flat back and flat front. Going into a bit more detail on the Xiaomi 13T Pro, it's available in either a vegan leather back, which I've got here, or a glass back, and it's got a plastic frame. This plastic on plastic, vegan leather is after all plastic, feels significantly cheaper than the Xperia 5 Mark V. Easy to hold, the flat side's nice and grippy, and the plastic back and frame mean it feels really light for such a hefty bit of kit. It's also waterproof, IP68, water resistant even, and there's that in-display fingerprint scanner, really nice big display. There's a lot going for it, but purely when it comes to feel and stylistically, even though I don't love the Xperia 5 Mark V, I still prefer it to the Xiaomi 13T. What's also exceptional about the 5 Mark V is those Sony staples that we've come to love. Fingernail can get that SIM card and micro SD card slot out without a SIM eject tool. Up at the top, 3.5 mil headphone jack for wired audio. And of course, there's that camera button as well. Even if it is quite small and fiddly, it is still there. Also around the back on the Sony Xperia 5 Mark V, everything looks a bit more classical. Xiaomi's testing the waters with this design for the 13T Pro. It's got a heavy beveled camera. There's a lot of bump, even though there isn't a lot of camera, whereas Sony's taken the other route. So yeah, all in all, definitely first round design, Sony wins out. When it comes to the screen though, it's a very different story. You've got a 6.67 inch display on the Xiaomi 13T Pro versus a 6.1 inch display. If you like smaller screens, then of course you're probably going to prefer the Sony. But when it comes to quality, Xiaomi absolutely knocks it out of the park. Both of these are technically 10-bit displays, but the problem with the Sony Xperia 5 Mark V is Sony opted for a more battery efficient panel than the 5 Mark IV and other Sony devices and it has really bad viewing angles, like terrible, for a phone of its price. The blue shifting off angle is so, so noticeable, and so you haven't got the color integrity that you can expect from top tier displays. The Xiaomi 13T Pro, however, gives you excellent screen quality, and that extra size also makes it more immersive. 20 by 9, 21 by 9, there's not a huge amount in it, but I actually prefer 20 by 9 displays because they're more versatile when you're doing stuff like watching something that isn't a cinematic movie. Really, really good for YouTube, really, really good for watching an episode of something on Netflix or whatever. Xiaomi 13T Pro gets the win when it comes to the screen.
Now both of these phones are up to date and they're running Android 13. That's what you can expect on these. Xiaomi's update policy is much, much better than Sony's though. They promise around four years of OS updates versus well, we've come to expect two years from Sony, which is really, really poor. Security updates do extend beyond that, and that's very important. However, if you want the latest version of Android, then you definitely want to pick up the Xiaomi over the Xperia 5 Mark V. However, I do prefer Sony's interface versus Xiaomi's. This phone currently runs with MIUI. That's Xiaomi's heavy operating system. The skin makes everything feel a little bit clunky, like wading through mud because there's just so much going on. It isn't necessarily a huge problem of a ton of bloatware, although there is more bloatware here. It's the little extras like wallpaper carousel, which just feels unnecessary, personalized adverts, and even down to the video application. Xiaomi just tries to do too much and in turn like doesn't do enough to streamline things. Sony, however, does have a few extras like side sense, but generally the interface is really nice and clean and intuitive. And if you've come from a Sony phone, you'll probably know exactly what to expect. Unfortunately though, that doesn't apply to Sony's camera software. Yes, it's a standard three apps when one kind of probably would have sufficed. We've got Cinema Pro, we've got Photo Pro, we've got Video Pro, and it can all get very confusing, especially if you want a Pro and you just want a camera app to take photos and occasional videos. And that's exactly what the Xiaomi 13T Pro has. Xiaomi's partnership with Leica also extends into the shooting mode. So there's Leica Vivid and Leica Authentic, and it'd be quite nice to get some look options on the Sony phone as well. However, we can't really talk about the camera apps too much until we cover the hardware. So let's get to it. The phones pack similarly specced main cameras in the resolutions are similar, but they are very different. On the Sony Xperia 5 Mark V, there's a Litio T808 sensor, the same as found on the Xperia 1 Mark V. So it's not the biggest sensor in the world, but it's got that stacked pixel technology and it's got OIS, obviously, dual pixel PDAF. There's a lot going for this camera's main sensor. As for the Xiaomi 13T, the main camera sensor is larger. It's an IMX707, one over 1.28 inches, which is really nice and big, so it should capture great depth of field. What you do have is optical image stabilization, but you don't have that stacked pixel technology. So you've got size versus technology in these two. Secondary cameras are also very interesting. Sony ditched the telephoto camera compared to the Xperia 5 Mark V's predecessor. So there's no optical zoom, just a digital zoom. You do get a 50 megapixel two times zoom camera on the Xiaomi 13T Pro. And you do get an ultra wide on both cameras. While the ultra wide on the Sony packs autofocus so the ultra wide on the Xiaomi 13T is a little bit more basic with a fixed focus lens. As for photo quality, a lot of that's going to come down to your personal preference. The Xiaomi 13T, when I first got it, started to take really high contrast photos with a really distinct look. Updates appear to have mellowed that out a little bit, but it still takes nice sharp photos and that big sensor captures really shallow depth of field for something this phone's price. So I really like the main camera. However, if you do want to bypass that processing, you will need to lean quite heavily into pro mode. Both of these phones aren't super aggressive with pulling out loads of shadow detail. So if you do like phones that take HDR looking photos, Neither will probably fit the bill. You'll want to opt for something like a Pixel or an iPhone or Samsung phone, for example. It's a similar story actually for the Xperia 5 Mark V. In the default photo mode, you're going to get good photos with a more classical take on photo processing. A little bit less sharp than the Xiaomi, a little bit less stylized as well, more old school, natural, neutral styling for photos. Both of these phones really come into their own when it comes to pro mode. Photography, video, on the Xiaomi with video, you can shoot 10-bit log or log style capture, and it looks really decent at up to 4K, 30 frames per second, and obviously it shoots raw. Down samples 12 megapixels, but still shoots raw as well, and loads of manual controls too. Obviously, I don't even need to talk about all the pro features on the Xperia 5 Mark V. This is where Sony phones completely dominate across Cinema Pro for advanced filmmakers, right through to Video Pro for more casual type 
videographers and you can do cool stuff like there's product showcase mode there's just so much in sony's phone so if you are into pro photography and videography while xiaomi's is competent Sony's kind of is in a realm of its own and that's why you'd want to pick up this phone. Paired with that main camera, it is exceptional. As for performance, whichever phone you go for, you're gonna get an incredible experience. The Xiaomi 13T Pro has a 9200 Ultra chipset from MediaTek and with a plastic body as well and back, really, really good for heat management. So you can tear through games. It's incredibly good for the price. As for Sony, you've got a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, which is last year's flagship chipset. So it's really, really good as well. The metal body is going to heat up a little bit more readily and a bit more thermal throttling seems to take place versus the Xiaomi 13T Pro. So actually, in a turn for the books, even though it's cheaper, if you want power, I'd probably lean towards the Xiaomi 13T. But both are going to do really, really well, whatever you throw at them. What I will say, though, the Sony Xperia 5 Mark V only has 128 gigabytes of storage as standard if you buy it in the UK. Different regions, it may be different. But with up to 512 gigabytes of storage in the Xiaomi 13T and 256 gigabytes as standard, it's really difficult to recommend the Sony phone if you like games like Genshin Impact, which has like 20 gigabyte files. So for gamers, the Xiaomi 13T Pro is a definite winner. Also worth noting that extra screen size is really helpful for gaming too. If you want great battery life, you'll get it out of both, but the experience is a fair bit better. The compromises that you make with that screen look like they pay off in terms of lasting for ages. I comfortably got a full day and a half out of this using it pretty aggressively. You could eke into two days if you're a lighter user, whereas the Xiaomi 13T Pro is pretty much a day long phone. You won't break a sweat. Both are 5000 milliamp battery phones, but with a 6.1 inch smaller display paired with that extra throttling that I noticed and simultaneously that display which probably is more efficient. The Xiaomi won't last quite as long as the Xperia. But if you want fast charging, the 13T Pro with its 120 watt fast charging, 20 minutes to 100% wins out hands down. You do get wireless charging with the Xperia, but with 20 watt wired charging, it's gonna take you significantly longer to charge. There are a few differences I didn't mention, side mounted versus in display, fingerprint scanner, etc. But all in all, I've covered the key differences. And what really stands out for me is if you want a big screen, with great value and loads of storage, then the Xiaomi 13T Pro is for you. It's also got a very competent camera for the price. Whereas if you want more classical Sony styling, loads of pro photo and video features that nothing else in its price category can touch and a mighty main camera sensor, then the Sony Xperia 5 Mark V is a clear winner. Ultimately, both good phones, but how good they are will entirely depend on the price you pick them up for. Hopefully you've enjoyed this comparison between these two upper mid ranges big upper on that one at its price. If you have, click that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel to stay on top of everything that we do and leave any questions you might have about either in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.